All right. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to Global, Le Global Leadership Day. Um, we're going to talk about engaging youth in urban environmental leadership. And uh, thanks to the sponsors for this event. And here's a map. We're all over the place. I'm going to skip this due to time. And go for it, Hannah. Cool. So my name is Hannah, and I uh, work at Ashoka Start Empathy Initiative. And uh, the Start Empathy Initiative is a collaboration of educators, parents, social entrepreneurs, and influencers all working to make empathy uh, and change making an essential part of education. And so the idea is that in the world we live in, being able to practice empathy and, and being able to uh, be a change maker in, in your community are essential skills. And so Ashoka uh, is building a network of, of schools and social entrepreneurs sort of committed, committed to empowering students with these skills. And so on, uh, on this map here, you'll see this global network of schools who are prioritizing empathy and just represent amazing examples of what a school can look like when they really design, uh, design curriculum and, and training and sort of the whole environment around teaching empathy and empowering young people to be agents of change in the world. And so we work with uh, over 200 schools across, across the globe who, who really believe uh, in, in this vision. And in the US, we work with around 70 schools, including environmental charter schools, uh, who is here with me today. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to, to Sammy and, and crew. Uh, but environmental charter school is a change maker school uh, that, that works with us as part of the Start Empathy Initiative. And it's just an amazing example of, uh, of, of really changing the paradigm uh, for education and, and putting kids in charge. Um, so Sammy, please take it away. Thanks so much, Hannah. Um, so I'm Sammy, and I have these awesome people with me <laughs> who are uh, Green Ambassadors interns. And so what we'll do today is just talk a little bit about how our local environmental work has global implications. And specifically, I'll just use climate change as an example, and then you'll hear from them. I'll try to keep what I say very short. Um, about their experiences as Green Ambassadors. So just a quick snapshot, Environmental Charter Schools is a network of three free public charter schools in South Los Angeles. And 90 plus, I, I think it was 96 this year percent of students are admitted to four-year colleges and universities. And 80 plus percent of the students are on free or reduced lunch. And so um, we just, we have three campuses just off of the busiest highways in Los Angeles and um, believe in students as change makers. And so our students are change makers and we don't think this happens by accident. We do things very specifically. So that is interdisciplinary curriculum and authentic assessment. Uh, we use the environment and experiential learning as lenses. We create small learning communities that are supportive of students and we collaborate with partners and we make our instruction relevant and engaging to students' lives. And part of what we believe in is also meeting basic needs. So love and belonging, power, fun, survival and freedom. And once we've created this safe space for students, high school is not always the most awesome place for most students. Um, from that place, students can go on and be change makers. And uh, I mean, in the, in the start empathy, we would say this is how we're building empathy. This is how we're building a, a community of um, change makers that care about each other in the world. So that's enough talking about students. Um, so one thing, key points, is youth are the leaders of today not tomorrow. You've heard like youth are leaders of tomorrow, but they're making change right now. And I won't talk too much about that because I'll let them talk about that. Um, another point is that cities are nature too. Uh, we can, we're, it's very important for us to preserve public land, public space, uh, natural areas, wilderness, forests, 
national scenic trails like the Pacific Crest Trail. Um, but our cities are part of our nature too. And Los Angeles in particular is a hugely biodiverse city. And in terms of urbanization, this is the, UN, the UN, we, our, our world is becoming urbanized. In general, there will be more, I think there already are, more people in the world living in urban areas than in rural areas. So we have to start shifting our idea of nature to include cities. And the other is that climate change is a social justice issue. Carolyn's excited about that. Um, she'll be writing her senior thesis about that. For me, I mean, I studied, personally, I studied international relations in college, and I'm a, also first generation uh, American, and I grew up with a global perspective. But when I think about climate change, it, it, my brain just turns off. It's all just international talks that never is, there's no agreement, and it, it just feels too big, and it's carbon trading, and what does that even mean? So I feel like, oh, no, no, I'm just going to focus on local issues. And a colleague of mine, Mandy, was noticing how local cities and entities are creating climate action plans. Um, so I've now started to think that climate change is really climate resilience on a local level. And how can we start to think about the work that we're doing in sustainability locally as part of a larger global climate resilience plan? So I'll just go through some examples. Uh, this is Rosemary Zayas. She's from Community Store Better Environment in Southeast Los Angeles. And she went to the Paris COP21 talks last fall. And um, just, you know, California was being congratulated for being a leader in sustainability. And she had to say, no, look, uh, we are getting pollution. We're being polluted in our own communities in Southeast LA. Um, we, we can talk about climate, when we talk about it globally, but if we look locally, there's some very tangible solutions that need to happen locally. And the Indigenous Environmental Network uh, was a strong presence. Uh, another example is climate action plans. So this is Antioch University, Los Angeles. Colleges and universities are taking what their sustainability measures and, and framing them as climate action plans. Cities and cities and counties, so this is the Depart LA County Department of Regional Planning, has a community climate action plan. So again, the people locally are seeing climate change as something that they can work on locally rather than relying on these international agreements. And this is uh, the U.S. Green Building Council uh, working with SCOPE, uh, which is a local community building organization, capacity building, uh, talking about building resilience in Los Angeles. And they've expanded, you know, so there's resilience in terms of climate, but it's also the community, communities that are, that know each other are more resilient. And also disaster preparedness and kind of expanding the idea of resilience. So those are just some local examples. And I particularly, as, as, as a school, we believe that schools and community can work together to address regional environmental issues that have global effects. So here's our campus, uh, our high school campus, Environmental Charter High School just off the 405 freeway south of the airport. Uh, this is 2006 and this is 2015, taken from the exact... <laughs> Taken from the exact location. I'm going to go back on that one. So that's 2006, and that's nine years later. Uh, all the plants have grown in. And this is just one example of this is what schools could look like. And this is a climate resilient school. So I'll go through a few more pictures. That's the stream, the living stream that uses recycled water. We have an underground rainwater cistern. 1,700 gallons of rainwater collected from the roof. We sort waste, recycling, compost, landfill. We have a bike shop, student-led bike shop. We work with a local bike shop um, in the community who comes and works with students. We have chickens <laughs> and rabbits. 
Uh, we've adapted some of our buildings. These are just typical Southern California bungalows um, to let in natural light. And we're, uh, Carolyn's doing some cool stuff with tiny homes and um, kind of creating energy efficient buildings. So um, green buildings. And then we have a student-led sustainable store. So students are learning entrepreneurship and selling sustainable materials. And we have outdoor education trips for every grade level, uh, backpacking, camping, kayaking, uh, having, as much as cities are important, it's important to be outside as well. So Green Ambassadors is a, a club that was started by students in 2006 and a biology teacher, Sarah Lehman, and it evolved into a class that is an elective that meets the requirements for UC uh, Cal State University admission. So taking this green class does not take away from a student's regular college admittance uh, track. It's actually part of it. And it's also a professional development institute for educators, uh, helping them implement these kinds of things on their school. And it's an internship, which is these students are part of this internship. They commit a lot of their time to being leaders in the community. Some of the things they do, uh, this is from the middle school, is water attachment, uh, ra building rain barrels on our campuses, building composters, the actual hands-on greening stuff. Uh, doing cooking classes and learning about food justice. This is with one of our partners, Growing Great. And they're leading sustainability audits for local companies. <laughs> this was just taken two months ago, and they're about to go present their findings to a company. Uh, they've done now three sustainability audits at three local companies, and we'll be doing more every year. And they're advocating. They're in Washington, D.C., advocating for national scenic trails and U.S. Uh, and forests and wilderness. They're, here they're taking a selfie with the chief of the U.S. Forest Service um, in D.C., which was pretty fun. And building community. Community building is just as important as all the quote-unquote uh, green environmental stuff. So, 11 minutes. It's up to you guys. So I wanted them to share just a little bit about what Green Ambassadors means to them and um, how their work has global implications. So I'll step aside. Um, hi, I'm Vanessa Iniguez, and I am a junior here at Environmental Charter High School, and I'm also part of the internship. So what I wanted to say is that we here in Green Ambassadors, we really try to focus on the community and ways that we can be part of our community, not just in our schools, um, and we try to make a positive impact. So the relationships that we've established with the local businesses and organization, as Sunny um, was mentioning before, helps us set an example for people around us, and it helps um, inspire people to take their own initiative and to start thinking about like their own problems and you know like looking to see in their community like, well, what is an issue that I have and starting to come up with the project, they're starting to like gather people. And that right there is the butterfly effect of like one person. As you saw on the Green Ambassadors thing, the little dot, um, if we could go back, yeah. That little dot is like one person that's, or just one idea. And then if you start spreading it to other people, then those people uh, get the message and they spread it to other people. So it's like a really big butterfly effect. And, um, if at least one person from every neighborhood like has an idea to create change, then the effect can be magnified globally. So that's how local um, initiatives can be magnified to a global scale. So thank you. Hi, so my name is Ogeshi Huber, and I'm a junior here at UCHS. So I'm also part of the Green Ambassadors Internship, and I just feel like Green Ambassador is a great way, for, um, is a great place where we can go out and we can advocate for the environment, and I feel like it's a great outlet for us to go out and actually do service learning and actually go do stuff for our community, and we can actually see the change that we make in our community. So Green Ambassadors has really opened my eyes because now I am an advocate for both social justice and for environmental justice. And I feel like without Green Ambassadors, I probably wouldn't have been. 
I enjoy being in the sub a while. We got, they actually sent me out to Washington, D.C. Um, we get to go do an audits for businesses. It's just like a great program, and I feel like without it, I wouldn't be able to help my community out as much because there's a lack of racial diversity in um, people who try and advocate for the environment. And I feel like it's not because people of color don't want to actually go out and advocate for it. I just feel like they, they don't have these opportunities to let them go out and actually do it. But Green Ambassadors has become a great outlet for um, us because mo we're mostly minorities. And so we get to go out and we get to go help out. And I'm really grateful for it. Hi, I'm Kayla Johnson, and um, I'm also a junior at EHS. Um, so mostly, what I find that is so great about Green Ambassadors and stuff is that, like everyone else said before me, that there really is a sense of community, and we're always trying to help those around us, regardless of what it is. So um, just like Samuel was talking about with the GAI, the um, institute where teachers come, and it's like a collab collaborative process between teachers and students. It's um, very, it, it's not like competitive here, you know, like it's everyone's trying to help each other, everyone's trying to lift each other up, and that's what um, I think mostly helps the community thrive and helps a community um, flourish and stuff like that. And um, you also get a lot of opportunities in Green Ambassadors. <clears throat> so that's also really good because when I do go to college, um, I do want to be going to some form of science, marine biology. So that would be really helpful to me. And I'm getting a lot of information using Green Ambassadors. So. Um, <clears throat> Hi, I'm Tyra. I hope everyone's doing well this <laughs> uh, afternoon. And um, I'm also a legislator here, and I'm also in the Green Ambassadors internship. And um, I was, last year, um, I was wondering what this club was, and I was just like, oh, they get to go on all these school field trips. Oh, they're not even doing anything. And then I joined the internship, and it was so amazing. You learn so many new things, and um, it's just a, a great family that we have built here in Green Ambassadors. And we got we get a, a lot of cool opportunities. Like me, I went to the PCT, and um, I actually got this button right here on the screen, <laughs> right here for the PCT. And um, it was so fun. And um, camping is really fun. And going out to the community and giving back and um, telling everyone what we know and what's an issue and what people may not know, and it's really great to go out there and just explore and um, tell people um, about the the social injustice that we have, um, that we've known, like the water crisis and climate change. And it, um, I love to um, share new information with people that may have not known this, because now everyone knows. And now you can just tell everybody, and yes, the butterflies, like that, but that's what I was talking about. Hi, I'm Carolyn. I'm also a junior. Uh, I'm also in the internship. And like all my peers said, um, Green Ambassadors is extremely important because you get to learn real world skills and you get to learn how to communicate with adults and you learn that people will listen to you, but you need to understand how to articulate yourself and really how to get your message across. And one thing that is really present in Green Ambassadors internship is our sense of community. We're all really close and the fact that we can work so well together, it makes us, it makes, the fact that we work so close together, it makes it easier and more enjoyable to go out and advocate for these things and sustainability is not just about green technology and innovation, it's about community. Um, you need to know the people in your community because that sense of empathy and resilience is what the environmental justice movement is all about. It's all about staying together and making sure no one group carries the burden of pollution that we've all contributed to and that affects everyone. And because we look at that on the local scale, that's basically what environmental justice is on a global scale. So when we're able to solve those problems on a small scale, it makes it easier 
to solve it on a large scale because it's hard to get everything to be sustainable if you don't look at the parts individually and if you don't look at everything like a system. It's all connected and not just environmental justice and social justice, they aren't separate. They're very interconnected and that's where it's kind of hard to solve one problem without potentially solving all the others. Okay. You heard it <laughs> directly from them. And um, I think we're going to, uh, I there's nothing else I can say after that. Um, basically, they just have it. They understand. And so I will address a specific thing, which is that as a white educator um, and a white environmentalist, personally, I think there's the same ideas that we talk about um, in terms of global issues where you know, people from the global north are going to places in the global south and saying, oh, we're going to go save these people from what they, from their issues, their problems, and we have the solutions. Um, I just want to name that, and I will objectify them as these are youth of color and they are not in need of saving. They're brilliant and they are the environmental movement. They have the solutions and understand what <laughs> yes, come on in. Um, I'm learning from them and just facilitating a space in which, especially in terms of what Kayla and Carolyn, I think, were saying about um, like real world skills. So these students are the ones who are going to be leading all, the, they're going to be filling and creating the jobs that are going to be solving the world's challenges. So. They're not, uh, they're perfect as they are, oh, yeah. and they're amazing, <laughs> and they are leading this. So I'm really happy that you got a chance to hear from them directly. And here's my email and Hannah's email if you're interested more uh, about this program. Um, if you email me, I will get it to them if you want to write any messages to them personally. Um, and our Twitter is Enviro Charter and Start Empathy is the uh, Ashoka Start Empathy Twitter. So if you want to tweet out, and then uh, yeah, let's say let's say bye to everyone. Bye. bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think. I'm not sure. Hold on, we're still recording. <laughs> I'm not sure how we stop it, but I will. Uh, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The title is I